everybody. My name is Ed, also known as Eddie Lam Halen. Uh, some of you may know me from my all Asian band, Cry of Silence. Uh, we're an all Asian rock band from Vancouver. I also play in a cover band called The Naturals, and we do live band karaoke, aka Rock Karaoke Live. I also do a spin off of it called Piano Karaoke Night, which is a much more you know piano lounge version of uh, karaoke. So if you want to feel like a rock star with Rock Karaoke or a lounge star with Piano Karaoke, uh, I go both ways on that. And I also do lots of other things, such as uh, putting on my own personal live shows. Every year in Christmas time, I always put on the Eddie and Friends Christmas concert. Uh, we always have different people from the music scene to uh, join me on stage and sing tons of cool, familiar Yuletide hits and all the other fun stuff. Now it's time to rock along. Take it away, Well, my experience in the music scene has been quite an adventure. So I've been in the scene for many, many, many years. Uh, but my first time ever performing in front of an audience was when I did my first piano recital uh, when I was taking piano lessons. I was classically trained, so uh, it was a great exercise for me to practice in front of a, a good audience. And uh, the other time I had the experience too was when I took singing lessons. I took singing lessons from Salve Dayo, who was a amazing, uh, amazing teacher. And she got me to perform at the Michael J. Fox Theater for one of her annual Christmas concerts. And so that gave me that great uh, um, experience to learn how to, you know, be a front man, how to, uh, you know, be a vocalist, just how to uh, you know, perform and be myself on stage. Now, I love doing open mic nights. That's one of my favorite things I love to do in the music scene. I love to, uh, you know, go uh, play songs acoustically, or sometimes I, I even go to jam nights, and I would just uh, go on uh, either the piano, the drums, uh, or I would sing and lead a set. I would play bass uh, or any other instruments that need um, need some help. Uh, someone set, oh, you know, I'd love to be there. Uh, and it's so funny though, because at the same time, a long time ago, I used to play uh, in bands with old friends that I've known for a long time when, when I turned 18. Uh, of course, they didn't really go anywhere, but you know, we were young and stupid, but you know, it, it, but it still motivated me to want to you know, do more in the music scene, right? So you know, I would leave the projects that I was at and want to do more, so I would you know, start my own band. I would just get more involved in open mic nights. I would go to more jam nights and well, my my first experience to playing live uh, in a band setting was when I turned 19. I went to the Yale in downtown uh, when they had their blues jam every Saturday. So here I am, this young, uh, this young Asian kid, you know, who was a rookie in that kind of scene. Here I am, you know, just you know, playing on the drums, uh, but then I also uh, played the Hammond organ too. And at that time, there wasn't a lot of of uh, Hammond organ players, so it was me, a few other folks, and of course uh, the late great Robbie King, uh, who uh, you know, who would embrace the uh, uh, that moment of uh, just playing the Hammond organ, just adding more to uh, people's set when playing the blues. So one of the things I really enjoy playing and when it comes to playing with Cry of Silence, uh, we've done some uh, really amazing shows that uh, one of the big highlights I can I can mention is uh, back in 2014 we opened for a really popular Filipino artist uh, named Bamboo and it was at the Massey Theater in New Westminster and I really enjoyed that one because uh, I got a chance to meet Bamboo backstage got to hang out with him chat with him and uh, just knowing the fact that we played in front of a really large audience who've uh, never heard of us you know it's 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 amazing uh, and I, I find that uh, you know the cool thing about it is that you know they come up people come to you and they say how much they really appreciate um, uh, doing what we do on stage and uh, yeah so playing with Bamboo back in 2014 was was a big highlight for me just knowing that we were playing at a very large venue uh, so yeah that was it was great uh, the other one I I would mention too is back in 2012 uh, we were playing at the Commodore Ballroom uh, we were doing a big fundraiser uh, to help um, our uh, the family of a late friend of ours actually his name was Randy Ponzio uh, unfortunately we lost 
lost him back in 2011. Uh, so we wanted to put on a big fundraising event to help his family out. Uh, so it, it was a huge lineup too because uh, you know it wasn't just us that played, but there were some other great performers like you know like David Moore and uh, we had Hey Ocean. Um, you know we even had you know some other amazing local talent who were willing to showcase their stuff uh, for a really really good cause. Uh, the other one too I would, I would mention is uh, we did the Richmond Night Market back uh, just a couple of years ago. Uh, one of the biggest risks we actually took uh, was, uh, or I wanna say it's, it's a nice change, is that uh, we, um, we had my guitar player, Isaac, uh, he led a song uh, which was, it's a cover by Jay Chow and it was a song that was uh, in Mandarin. And it, we've never done a song in a different language before and, but you know what, this was a great, Thing that we did because you know this gives us uh, the opportunity to be more diverse right to sing in different languages so you know who knows maybe we'll do a song in Cantonese maybe in Tagalog who knows but we hope that that will be a big thing uh, the other highlight uh, I would say is uh, we <laughs> if, if you really want to talk underground we actually did a show at uh, at the Matador back in late it was either late 2012 or late 2013, but it was basically uh, our friend's basement show. And there was a lot of people there. There was like about probably f like almost 50, 40, 50 people in that basement. And here we were, uh, you know, like this, uh, this band that was just rocking out. And, you know, we were just going and saying, you know, like, um, uh, and, you know, people in, in the basement were just going nuts, you know, there, there was like a little bit of a mosh pit happening. And it, it's so funny, you know, because you, you talk about being outside the box, being non-traditional uh, in terms of, you know, different venue choices, right? And uh, uh, that I would say that's one of, one of the most non-traditional things we've ever done. Uh, is playing in you know in the basement and uh, it's so funny because you know I've, we've done a few basement shows and honestly like we've never felt more connected to people that way than I've ever experienced. The one thing I will tell you about uh, live band karaoke in general is that it is. It's not your average karaoke. It's not your traditional karaoke. For us, uh, we give karaoke singers that rock star experience, basically, right? And same with piano karaoke, uh, like I mentioned before, it's a lounge star experience. So uh, with the full band, uh, it's it's crazy because you then you you get to know what it's like to be with musicians. Right, you learn how to interact with the band, um, and just like you know, knowing uh, you know what, uh, how you know the song may be played differently too, and that's the fun part about it, and that's what I love about it is the unpredictability because you don't know uh, who who you're playing with, but you're you know it's going to be a different experience, and afterwards you actually might feel good about it too. And that was the, the result that we always had is that people have told us uh, for most of it is that, wow, you know, I love this, you know, I want to do it again. Um, and it creates that demand. Because, you know, what, how often do you get a chance to sing with a band on stage spontaneously? Rock Yoki actually gives you that experience. Same thing with piano karaoke. Well, if you, if you feel like you, you're, being in a full band might be intimidating, but you want something that, you know, that might be a little bit easier for you, then piano karaoke is that good choice too. Whereas it, it's the alternative where you can feel like a mega lounge star. You can actually just like, you know, you know go up on stage, feel like, you know, you're in one of those lounges in Vegas, you know, you grab a microphone and, you know, but sing like a piano version of your favorite hit song. And the great thing is though, is that you're still connected to the audience. Uh, you still feel connected to everybody in, in a much smaller atmosphere. And I think that's the reason why you know, I, you know, I always enjoy doing piano karaoke is just because of that intimacy, you know, the much more lighter setting uh, where you can actually you know, be more engaged with the audience on a much more intimate level. Well, you can actually find me on my personal website. It's eddielammusic.ca, and it's pretty much my empire where I link all my projects I'm in, so the both Cry of Sons and also with the Naturals uh, with Rocky Oki. Uh, of course, you can find uh, rockyokilive.ca. That's our website. And of course, you can also look up uh, Cry of Sons through cryofsilencemusic.com. Well, we 
all know in Vancouver, the we, it's the tough reality check is that venues do shut down. It, it, it happens, right? And uh, but we, but the question we should ask ourselves is how do we overcome that? What do we? Where do we go from there? Uh, and I think that that mega advice is to uh, just keep networking uh, and not just networking with other musicians, but I would say keep networking uh, with different venue owners, um, you know, even people who uh, have places that may have potential to have, have live events, like such as live music. And uh, you want to educate them on why it matters, you know, why is this a huge um, part of our city? Why, why should live music matter uh, as a part of our culture? And I, I would say too, to, to every young musician out there is keep being creative. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because I think that, uh, you know, in order to uh, make things stand out, you need to think outside the box. And part of thinking outside the box is to, you know, uh, think of something that can that you think would grab people's attention. And don't worry about flunking that idea because if it does flunk, at least you tried and you can move on to uh, big, bigger, better ideas. And of course, uh, you know, I would say. Uh, uh, Self-care is much needed. Uh, you, you have to take good care of yourself. Uh, so if you feel like you're ever burnt out, take breaks. Uh, you know, um, and don't be don't be afraid to say no to certain gigs if you've done too many and you really need some time to rest so you can re-energize. Because once you're re-energized uh, uh, and you're relaxed, it, it, it gives you a, a, a much better state both physically and mentally. And so when you take good care of yourself, then you can definitely take on the music scene in full speed. And finally, I would say to everybody uh, to stop being competitive with each other. You know, and we're all in the same boat. We want to make the scene matter. You know, we're all local people who, you know, of course, you know, we take time out of our day jobs to wanting to create things too, right? And, you know, we're all in the same boat. We want to create, you know, I would say, you know, stop creating competition and start creating community together. Uh, because that's how you can uh, make the scene better. Uh, so I would say collaborate with like-minded individuals and uh, make things happen. Uh, and of course, one more advice I would say to people is, uh, this is to the fans actually. So if you guys are fans of someone's music, then I would say don't just be their fans, be their advocates. You know, go out there and tell people uh, why you enjoy your friend's band or you know maybe your brother's band your dad's band who knows who whoever it is that that you know that has a band be their advocate uh make them matter uh, so that way you know you can create a buzz uh, for for that band and we can help make the scene uh, a lot better and don't forget be open uh if someone else started a band uh you know have an open ear have an open mind have an open uh open um yeah have an open mind and check out their stuff because you'll never know. You might be a fan of it and you might become their next advocate. My name is Eddie Lamb and I support the scene. Hey, it's James from Support the Scene. If you're interested in being interviewed or want to be featured on our channel, please comment down below or find us on Facebook and message us and we'll get back to you as fast as we can. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Rock on.